Hey guys, I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk to you um, a bit about the reading journal entries. Um, the purpose of the journal entry, um, largely speaking, is to write down your reactions to and your connections to um, each of the, the three parts of the readings. I want to read this to you from uh, St. Saint Mar Saint Martin's Guide to, write, uh, to Writing and Reading. Um, it's about analyzing stories, and, it, and um, it's pretty good because it pretty closely ties to what it is that I'm hoping to um, accomplish with the reading journal entries. It says, analyzing stories. Stories have a special place in, in most cultures. They can lead us to look at others with sensitivity and, for a brief time, to see the world through another person's eyes. They can also lead us to see ourselves differently, to gain insight into our innermost feelings and thoughts. And that, that part right there is probably most reflective of what I want to do with the reading journal entries. Although writing about stories is an important academic kind of discourse, many people who are not in school enjoy discussing stories and writing about how a story resonates in their lives. That is why book clubs, reading groups, and online discussions forums are so popular. Good stories tend to be enigmatic in that they usually do not re reveal themselves fully on first reading, so it can be enjoyable and enlightening to analyze stories and discuss them with other readers. Even very short stories can elicit fascinating analyses. For example, Ernest Hemingway, Hemingway wrote the six-word story which he reportedly claimed was his best work. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. Here's a book that I read, uh, I don't know, several years ago. I think I alluded to this in our um, canvas. It's called A Separate Piece by John Knowles. It takes place in uh, during World War II, and it's just about one event that took place in the main character's life that changed his life. Okay, so I wrote about this, even made a little bookmark out of it, um, in, in my reading journal entry, which I, which I keep for the books that I read. Here's another book I read actually in 1997 while I lived in Japan for six months. It's called A Single Tear. It's about um, a family who went through the <clears throat> Chinese Cultural Revolution. So it took place in the early 1950s um, during the uh, Mao Zedong years uh, during the Cultural Revolution. So it's very s similar in that way to the book that we're reading. For the longest time, this was my favorite all-time book. I mean, probably for about 15 years, this was my favorite all-time book. If you can find this book, that might be a challenge, but if you can find it, um, I would challenge you to read it. It's just amazing, the, the, the persecution that this family endured, but particularly the author, Mao Zedong, or excuse me, Wu Ning Kun, um, and, and he writes about that, and just, it's, it's uh, just amazing. Anyway, <clears throat> I have a lot of books on writing, as you might uh, guess, and this one is my favorite by far. And I don't think that I will probably ever read another one this good. It's by Stephen King called On Writing. And the reason I like this so much is because it's really divided into two parts. The first part, oh, look at that. I jumped right to it. The first part is awesome because it talks about, Stephen King writes about his life, his writing life, and how writing affected him. And he starts way back when he was a little kid and how he used to go up into uh, the attic of his home he lived on the East Coast, uh, I believe in Rhode Island, and he'd go up into the attic of his home and he would write up there and he would read his, um, his comic books and various other things that affected him as a writer. And then the second part is, is just about the mechanics of writing, and he does it in such a way that it makes it really interesting and entertaining. This one is called First They Killed My Father, and it takes place in Cambodia. Um, they just made a movie, uh, recently, I think in 2017, made a movie of this. My wife and I watched it just the other night, and it was really great. So, if you get a chance, check that one out. This, I like memoirs. This is a memoir called My Lobotomy. Uh, it's a story about a guy named Howard Dully, who had a lobotomy uh, in the, I believe in the 19, late 1960s, and he was the last person to have a lobotomy. And it's, uh, of course, it tells the story of his life up to the point of his lobotomy, then the, the horrible consequences of the lobotomy and how, how he has to live with those consequences now. This book is called The Goldfinch. It's just a really, really long book um, that is very interesting. It's uh, the story of a boy who is in 
um, the setting at start is this, it's a story of a boy who's inside of a, um, uh, a museum and there is an earthquake and the museum falls apart and he gets hold of a, 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 a painting called the goldfinch. And it's the story of how he decides he's going to hold on to that painting and what the results and consequences of that are. So anyway, just wanted to share some of those books with you and, um, let you know that, and I'm sure most of you do already know that books can change your life. They really can. They can make a huge difference, but you obviously have to read them. And in order to read them, you have to get started, which means you really got to, in this day and age, we have to put away the, the screens and the TVs and the games and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, good luck on the second part of this, uh, uh, of the reading journal entry. And um, keep in mind that the whole point of it is to not the point of it is not to tell me what the book is about i know that um, i'm hoping that this will be influential and beneficial to you as the reader in that you're you're bringing out your experience you're connecting your experiences to the book and in so doing you're learning something more about yourself okay good luck